5280 Sports Network, good morning. It is your Monday morning minute here as we are finally to Super Bowl week. That guy right there, Sean Drotar. My name is Nate Lundy. First and foremost, we invite you to tune in throughout the week starting Wednesday morning, actually starting Tuesday afternoon, but starting Wednesday morning, Sean and I will be with you from Houston, Radio Row, uh, as we bring you all the sights and sounds and interviews and fun and shenanigans and uh, hungover radio shows and anything else we can think of to do from Houston. It'll be a lot of barbecue. This man does not always speak for me. Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, so anyway, we invite you to be down, to, uh, be a part of that with us all week long. It is uh, brought to you by our friends at the Colorado Luxury Home Team, part of Key Real Estate Group, Mark, Dave, and Sid taking care of everything for you. If you're looking for a new home, make sure you're visiting them online first. Let them help you out. It is coloradoluxuryhometeam.com. The Nuggets, with some interesting stats as brought up by our friend Chris Dempsey from the Denver Post, really have been on a streak, Sean, winning seven of the last nine, um, really since kind of shaking up the lineup. My question for you is, do you get worried a little bit that because they're starting to win, that they might shy away from some of the trades that you've been calling for? Well, yes, because they've done it in the past. They've had blips where they win three, four in a row, and then they decide, well, see, our core finally flipped the switch, which is something that... Uh, the Avalanche run into as well down the Pepsi Center There's and the Rockies. There is a temptation to fall in love with your own talent, especially when you're young and you, you see it turn around just a bit. But uh, the Nuggets have been playing well. Seven out of nine. The only bad loss in there, a three-point loss to the Minnesota Timberwolves game they probably should have won. But generally they're beating the teams on the schedule they should be beating. It's not like they're knocking off the Cavs. It's not like they're knocking off the Warriors. So you don't want to overstate it. But they are playing better. And the fact that they were able to get over uh, on Phoenix without Nikola Jokic, who's dinged up with that hip problem. Fortunately, not that that serious day-to-day -day type of injury and they have another game uh, tonight against the Lakers, a game that you hope that they find a way uh, to win. So we'll see how they continue to progress. But yeah, the, the trade, now that we're only a couple weeks out from that trade deadline, I do think there's a concern, but then again, you're concerned that they're winning too much. You have to sort of find a way to balance it. Uh, I do think the Nuggets, though, need to think long-term. Daniel Gallinari's contract, he has a player option for next year. Believe me, he's opting out of that because there's way too much money to be made under the new CBA. So the Nuggets, first thing they have to decide, do you want to commit $20 million a year or more to Daniel Gallinari? If you don't, you probably need to look at making a deal and getting something before he leaves for nothing. Absolutely. The other uh, news and notes from out of the uh, weekend, aside from the Pro Bowl and all the fun there with That's the Broncos players uh, posting pictures from Disney World, uh, the naming of John Lynch as the new general manager of the San Francisco 49ers, reportedly a six-year deal that will con be a concurrent with what Kyle Shanahan will get, which is also expected to be a six-year deal. The Niners have done that historically, kind of paired their guys up and had their contracts match. John Lynch uh, does not have experience with this, Sean, um, and I think it raises some interesting questions questions about teams trying to follow that mold of taking a really good smart player and seeing if they can be a really good smart executive at the same time. The Niners are taking a bit of a dice roll here with uh, Jed York saying, you're our guy, go make it happen. It's a huge dice roll. I mean, we've seen it before. John Elway, of course, didn't exactly uh, spend a ton of time as, as a GM, but he was an, he worked in football. He was executive with the former Colorado Crush before that, so he had had a little bit of experience. In John Lynch's case, he went from the playing field to the announcing booth, and now he's going right to GM, which means it's, I have a chance. It's not over for me yet. I could jump. I can do it. You, you, you think so? I just want, I wish John and Kyle Shanahan the absolute best. I get a little bit worried we might be looking at the Matt Millen uh, in Detroit kind of model right now, but I'm hoping that's not the case. I think John will do a good job, wishing him absolutely the best of luck. I've done radio and stuff with him uh, before, we both have, and so we wish John the absolute best as we wait for Kyle Shanahan to be officially named next week. Again, the reminder, we will be with you from Radio Row in Houston uh, starting uh, basically tomorrow afternoon, uh, Tuesday afternoon, all the way through the rest of the week. We look forward to doing that with you is courtesy of our friends uh, Key Real Estate Group's Colorado Luxury Home Team. For Sean, I'm Nate. See you tomorrow.